right. Well, it's been... It's been a decade now since the Beatles broke up and went their separate ways. For my first guest tonight, it meant a life of globetrotting, making records, directing and acting in films. It was while making the film Caveman that he met and married the beautiful model-turned-actress Barbara Bach. Tonight, I'm delighted to say they're my special guests. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. and Mrs. Richard Starkey, better known as Barbara Bach and Ringo Starr. <laughs> Won't be a minute. Smile. We're on holiday, you see. Okay. <laughs> Everybody takes snaps when they're on holiday. So well, how has it been going? 18 years since you were last in this fair land, sir? You'll have to speak up, Michael. 18 years. <laughs> it's gone death, the old I'm lad. I'm trying to show the old fools, you see. Yes. Uh, yeah, 18 years, you're right. And? And what? Coming back. <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> We I'm came now, back today. I'm now gonna... I'll take these off, because he's only going to ask me later. I'm now going to... Hey! <laughs> you wear them. There we go. This is the, the life of a talk show. It's a made of... Oh, no, really no you look big, terrible yeah. with them. I know. I didn't Rather, spoil your hair, did I? Listen, are we going to have a proper interview tonight? Yes. Or are we going to have... Oh, oh don't God. tell them about England, Michael. They'd get crazy. They would, wouldn't they? Hey, there's yeah. one person from England. Let's hear it. Oh, there's two now. <laughs> One just emigrated. You mentioned the, the opals. In fact, um, there's a, quite a story opal attached City, to, the, to the, this opal here, isn't there? No, this opal is a terrible story. Come on, close up. <laughs> come on, come on, I'll wait. This one here, you see, is new. Yes. This is from Solly at... Opal Fields. Opal Fields. Thank you, Sol. Lovely man. We had to get it in because we got it free. No. So, <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, 18 years ago, when I was in Australia, yeah. all, all the jewelers of Australia supposedly bought me this ring with an opal in it. And for 18 years, it's been insured for a fortune. And uh, since we're back in Australia, and it is Opal City, we went to uh, Sol's and we talked to him. And I said, well, what about this? He says, I'll sell you a bag of them for $10. <laughs> <laughs> You've been done. We'd yeah. been done. It was sort of some man-made madness baked in sugar yeah it worked better at the uh, restaurant the other night this most story. things <laughs> worked better at the restaurant the other night yeah. Barbara how are you enjoying it because this is your first trip isn't it here yes. I'm really enjoying it you I are. mean I love the feel of the place the people are very nice the people uh, are nice one thing that was strange as I did tell you I thought it was a bit weird to be sprayed getting off the plane <laughs> <laughs> but you know I understand why now yes. well especially when you're on the floor going ooh, ooh. <laughs> 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 did, they, did they spray you when they spray you when you arrived 18 years ago? Yeah, yeah, but they sprayed you through the front of the plane. Then now you have a guy going. Psst, 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 psst. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, but last time I came here, you know, because I didn't arrive with the rest of the boys. No, you came later, didn't you? Because uh, they wouldn't travel they with a... him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling the jokes, dear. Yes, dear. <laughs> I came late, and, you know, you fly for 36 hours. I got to Australia after 36 hours, just coming out of hospital. And can one of the cameras pull back and I'll go against the wall? Because, <laughs> because now. after Acting 36 now. hours on a plane, you get off and you go... And they say, how do you like it here? <laughs> hey! How much of a problem was it for you, though, Barbara, travelling uh, around with uh, this legendary figure? I mean, <laughs> it's not do you get, no, but do you get tend to get more, shoved into the more background? More living with, with than travelling. <laughs> Only kidding. But do you tend to get shoved into the background? Uh, do you find that? No, no not at all. I mean, I only by say... me. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. That's not true. Mm. <laughs> kissy, kissy, kissy. Uh, God, it can get quite sickening. This, no. I tell you. Oh, no, I know. Yeah. Hi, Mary. I think it gets wearisome for both of us after a while. You know, the fact that you can't really just walk down the street. I mean, I've seen a bit of Australia. I can pop out the hotel and walk up and down and look in shops. I have that one fan keeps following me. 
<laughs> People don't bother they me. They said on the news. But as soon as Richie's there, you know, no matter what he does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that, actually. The one stand, yeah. yeah. Well, you had well, five we, tonight. I had f it's building up, folks. Five tonight. <laughs> uh, no matter where we go, inevitably someone will come and say, you know, I don't want to disturb you. It's bad in Pakistan. You know, and so forth. But <laughs> could I have an autograph? <laughs> so it gets a bit heavy at times. Is well, that right, Bob? Yes, darling. How heavy is that? So heavy. heavy. <laughs> or do we have an act? When you started out, though, 20 years ago, yeah, Mike, as I said, serious part of it. Don't get close. Before, no. I'll stab you to death. <laughs> <laughs> we could have quite a battle, <laughs> couldn't we? Did you ever get the old Maori welcome? Did you ever have to do uh, that? Oh, yes, I did have the Maori welcome. I was there two days. Were you? <laughs> <laughs> but 20 years ago, as I said, let's get serious for a let's moment. Let's get serious. Right. Okay, Mike. When you oh, started, yeah, you did again. this one record. Thanks. Hmm. <laughs> oh, look out, he hates to be messy. <laughs> do, you have any, yes, do you have any tips as to what to do with this lunatic on my left-hand side here? Uh, what this is not a lunatic. Oh, what, what do you do? No, I don't want you to do this, but this is what she <laughs> does. Mm. <laughs> I'll have uh, a go. No, no, no. Oh, no, I don't want to. I don't want to. Have you got any idea what was happening the first time when you, were, when you went to number one in Britain 20 years ago? Do you, any, any of you got any clue what was going to happen to you? No. Not at all? Well, I mean, we started out to be the biggest band in Liverpool. And then, sort of, uh, Bradford. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's more than you tell. The world, yeah. And, uh, I mean, my uh, madness was like the Palladium. Then we conquered Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> And then it went on from there. Yeah. But no, the first record, I mean, you were just so happy to have a piece of plastic that you were on then, you know, because everybody turned us down. Yes. Bar uh, EMI and George Martin, and he'd only done the goons before us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he was, we were really a bit, uh, you know, crazy. The cliff was on another label within EMI, and we'd got George Martin and Parlophone. <laughs> They thought we were a comedy group. When did you first realise, though, that in fact that it was taking off, it's becoming something special and rare? Mm, birth. At birth. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, now, you, I don't know. We, we had to do Europe uh, so many times, you know, France, Denmark, all that, those places just across the bay. Mm. Um, and uh, you know, it's it started. I mean, we played Scotland. They used to laugh at us. Really? Oh yeah. Why? Thought we were silly. <laughs> but they were all there, wellies and Big Macs and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, oh, you know, it just... But was that your ambition, to, to, to join a group when you were a kid? Uh, well, the ambition was to play drums first, and it, it's pretty pointless playing on your own. There's not much That's melody, you know. <laughs> Do you can't play many tunes. Yeah. So, um, at 14, I really wanted to play the drums. And I got a kit at 18. And, uh, and I had them a month and joined a group because there was no way you could rehearse where I lived. Because I was in the back room, we were in all those little houses, you know, and I go, Bum -bum, will you keep him quiet? <laughs> you know, Are you crazy to be all these neighbors screaming at you? So I, I just, well, the only way is to join a, join a group. Yeah. I was in the fastest group on earth. The fastest group on earth? People used to dance, and we'd st see we had no tempo because none of us could play. It was very easy for me. <laughs> I joined this <laughs> no playing band. Yeah. You know, if you had the instrument, they'd let you join. <laughs> you didn't have to be. Able, you know, as long as you had the instrument, they didn't care. It looks good. Yeah. So we used to play at these dances, and we'd start these tracks. You know, these songs, and it'd be like, <laughs> and it'd get so fast, and there'd be all these dancers going. Back off, lads, you ready? Can you slow down a bit? <laughs> oh, lost me flower. Oh, lost your cornflower. Oh, well, it's for you. <laughs> Did you know, though, when you got together, first of all, with, uh, with the other three, that, that in fact there was something special there, yes. from your point of view? From my point, yes, because I'd played in several bands in Liverpool, and the only band I used to go and watch were the Beatles. And, uh, but, I mean, as soon as you sat there and played with them, you felt there was a different experience than playing with everybody band. else. Yeah. Great band, great players. Yeah. Yeah, well, they were and they'll be great players, yeah. Hey! Before, before we get off the subject and on to something else, how inevitable was the, the breakup of that group? How inevitable? Well, the breakers, we'd be, you know, eight years I'd been in the job. And also, at, at the period when you start, 
That's all you live for when we were working for the band, you know. Then we all got married and we all had children and then you had other things to do as well. So it was like an inevitable breakup because uh, we all got busy doing other things, mm. you know, and then people wanted to do solo albums. Even though it was a solo album, we like, you know, we were all, all really on the early solo albums. But how difficult, how difficult was it for you to accept that breakup? I mean, it must Oh, the breakup was horrendous. Is that what you're getting to? Well, yeah, I mean, it must you have You want been... to see me cry? No, no, no I don't. <laughs> I want you to tell me what it was like, because you remember it. Well, as I remember it, uh, you see, because I wasn't the songwriter or, you know, I was the drummer, and so, the, and I'd written a couple of songs, but, it, you know, it wasn't like my uh, forte was writing the song, Octopus's Garden. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... I sat in the garden for a year. I mean, I went home and just... We'd all decided it was the end. But when it actually came to the break, I went and uh, just sat round for a year saying, <whistles> well, what'll I do now? And then I said, well, you've got to get out the garden first. <laughs> to do something. <laughs> and then I started rolling again. Hmm. It was like a break of, of a family relationship, I suppose, in this Well, I never had a family, Michael. No, not until later. <laughs> <laughs> Barbara, at this time, were you, in fact, uh, do you ever fantasise as a, as a young girl about meeting a beetle? Not really. They she wanted young... to meet the stones. Really? <laughs> Is that still your ambition? No, oh, I've met them all. all. <laughs> <laughs> but that wasn't your scene at all. No, actually, it wasn't. I haven't seen any of the beetle films. Have you not? No. No, no well, matter like... how many times I put them on. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I wasn't going to show this, but I'll show you now if you've not seen. I'll show you a little little clip from of him being very funny in a film it's called it's Hard Day's Night. Is that the David Essex one? No, no, no. Uh, that's how much he knows. <laughs> the David Essex. That was fresh this morning, two and nine. I must say, um, that whole piece of film and the piece you showed before walking on the dock and everything, Dick Lester, who was the director of the movie, um, I arrived on the set straight from a nightclub and we had a lot of dialogue in those scenes and I couldn't even speak. <laughs> really? So, but we had a whole crew, so we had to do something. Oh, well, why don't you throw the dart over here? Or, do this. And that was the, the episode, in fact, in the movie that uh, moved one critic to describe your performance as Chaplin-esque. Chaplin. And in yeah. fact, you were... Too Billy Chaplin. Billy <laughs> Chaplin. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, of course, started your working career in, uh, in Italy, didn't you? I mean, the film acting yeah. career as, as such. Of course, you married a, an Italian. But did you speak Italian when you went into Italian movies? No, I didn't. So did you have any language problems making those movies? Well, they had a lot of problems. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because most Italian films in the 60s, I'd say all of them, were looped. So therefore, what you said was not really the soundtrack for the film. So they could hire foreigners who had a working knowledge of Italian. But sometimes when you're saying your lines, you'll forget a word. So I'd say like, you know, he killed my brother instead of my boyfriend, or, you know, just interchange a word. And everyone would crack up because, yeah. you know, it meant nothing. Yes. But the scene was fine, printed. When you, when you did the famous the, um, Playboy spread, did you have any... Well, there are certain Playboy spreads that are famous, and that's one of them. Did you have any qualms about doing it? 
No, not really. You didn't? No. Nope. My body is my life. <laughs> <laughs> did you see that spread, by the way? Yes, you did. Did I see it? Yeah. Why do you think we're here? <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. That's me being apart, flippant. Apart from that reaction, what kept, did, you, did you get any reaction at all? Any oh, odd reaction? Did I get reaction? Really? Greatest letters. Right, well, can you remember well, most any? Most of them were from little kids, too. Right. You'd get these letters and you'd start reading them and say, what? You know, and you almost didn't want to read tell them. Tell them what they said, dear. No, I won't tell Come you what on, they tell said. Come on, tell them what they said. And usually they Think were of what? some kind of invitation. Some kind of invitation. To, to dance. Uh -huh. And mm -hmm. see my place. Yeah. And then they'd sign it, and you'd look at the handwriting and try and figure out if it was a maniac or what. Usually it was like a 14-year-old kid, yeah. you know, inviting you when his mom was out, yeah. and so <laughs> forth. Yeah, just the silliest well, letters. Tell them how many you went to, Bob. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Did you, of course, between you, the two of you, work, you've worked with some of the, uh, the, the superstars of movies, haven't you? I mean, you've worked with Shaw and yeah, Moore, and so. you worked with Burton, with Brando. Yeah. Um, with Peter Sellers. Yeah, Pete was great. Do you enjoy him most of all, did you? <laughs> <laughs> enjoy working with him most of all. Oh, I enjoyed him all, all round. All round, did you? Uh, no, Pete was great because, you know, Brando was great because Brando is everybody's hero. Well, he's my hero. And uh, we were in Rome, talking about uh, Italy, doing a movie. And it was like, we were all having lunch, and it was, I was sitting there, Richard Burton, Elizabeth Taylor, and Walter Matthau, and then Marlon was coming for lunch. And I'm just, oh, madness now, you know, just, oh, he's coming for lunch, I can't even eat. And so he comes in, and I'm just like, hey, hello, Mr. Mangalore. And, uh, you know, we're all ordering like, oh, chicken fricassee, and, <laughs> you know, what pate or whatever you've got. And he comes in, mm, um, uh, egg and chips. <laughs> <laughs> that superstar's allowed to do that. blew me away. Yeah. And then we got friendly and we used to go out of, you know, on occasions. And uh, we went to a place called Anzio. You probably remember yes, it. Yes, I don't remember, I know <laughs> of it. And, uh, we were on a boat down there, and he was small and brand new. He, he was hanging on doors, and, you know, and he'd have a spoon, and he'd be saying, oh, look at this spoon. So, yeah, it's a spoon, Marlon. <laughs> but uh, he was the most amazing man to me. What about Mae West? Because you worked in the last movie, didn't you? I mean, yes, I did. Yes, you did. Yes. <laughs> I mean, May was great because, well, we did the movie with May called Sex Tet, and uh, we were lucky if she could walk the length of the stage. And then it was very hard, because I had to play this mad sort of Polish director who used to be a husband. Hello, me darling, it's so crazy to see you. Do all this madness. Not a bit big, am I, for TV? <laughs> and, uh, but May had, like, this earphone where the director would read her lines to her. So I'd come in going, oh, May, it's so crazy. And then you'd have to wait <laughs> while her line went into her ear. And then she'd say, Oh, Vladislav, it's so nice to see you, but it's like 10 minutes later. So <laughs> it wasn't easy to have spontaneity. Right. And, you know, and all the photographs of May were great because, you know, she had these, like, elephant eyelashes. So every time you'd have a still forest, she'd go, Oh! And, oh, keep them open now. Click, click, click. Mm. <laughs> It'll be down again. <laughs> But I, I did grow to love the woman. She was an amazing personality. I mean, she was ma She took us out to dinner one night, and she gets there an hour before setting up the lights. <laughs> really? <laughs> Pro probably you know, when you get there. She's all it when you get in. You're, yeah. Oh, you're high, man. <laughs> I, I can't stand up, you know, because of the lights. But can I can I ask you, the, 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 the two of you, this is the second time I've interviewed you, and uh, it's the second time you've insisted the last. On, coming, on the last, <laughs> on coming on together. I know that as a matter of policy, wherever you do an interview now, you actually do it together. Whatever we do, we Mucho do it together. Mucho togetherness. That's right. Well, that's true, isn't it? Now, that is true. But when did you decide to do that? Well, we really decided it um, in Mexico when we were doing the movie that we really wanted to be together. But because uh, then we were, you know, we were living together, but, you know, Barbara has children, I have children, I'd have to leap away and I may stay somewhere longer. But I think it, it came about after we had this uh, car crash in England where the 
you know, it was a Mercedes, not to plug a Mercedes, but they are safe. Uh, we, we went around a roundabout several times. <laughs> <laughs> but we were going this way, you know. And uh, I was throwing out the car and I was shocked. I mean, and it, it sort of made me realize, Barbara will tell you her story, that, uh, you know, I, I'm deeply in love with the lady and I don't want to be anywhere else, you know. I'd, even if, you know, would, if Barbara was backstage and I was on, you know, or she came on first and I'm coming later, you still feel like there's a separation. Mm. And, you know, we have decided that there'll be no separation or as little separation as possible. And we haven't been out of each other's hands since... Since you came on this show, certainly, certainly yes. <laughs> Barbara, what about, uh, what about the, the, the family aspect? Because, as Ringo said there, you, you're divorced, remarried, and you both have families. It, does that cause anything of a problem at all? Not for the us. Children? Not for us. We've... It was a bit of a shock to them at the beginning. Mm. You know, this is your new brother, this is your new sister, but they get along quite well. Mm and for seem kids. to enjoy each other's company. You also, and I, I didn't know until, until recently, you, you do quite a bit of fundraising for um, a specific charity because you have a, a child, in fact, who's handicapped, don't yeah. you? Can you tell me what the sort of nature of the, of the handicap is? Of the Cerebral child? palsy. Uh, he had a trauma at birth and therefore his motions were affected. Actually, I mean, the classic word is spastic. Yes. And we were terribly fortunate because it's a very mild case. And he's been operated on once and will be operated on again. And uh, other than that, he's a beautiful, intelligent well, young child. So there's nothing it's, mentally wrong with him. It's no, just a, the, the physical. Um, just the physical aspect. Mm -hmm. But I've learned a lot about it. And uh, naturally, I've met a lot of little buggers that have similar problems. And it, you do grow because you realize what real problems are. Mm and what's really important, yeah. and start putting things in proper perspective. How does he face it? Uh, better Just than like I you. Do. Better than I do. Does. You know, and he, he teaches me how to cope with it. Really? I mean, he has lots of patience, and he's very ambitious, because, you know, he'd like to do everything everyone else does. Well, he wants so to I be think... a banker, actually. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you learn a lot. <laughs> Yes. And by the time he's had the operations, hopefully he, he then will be absolutely restored to, to, to normal health, would he? No, I don't think any well, of us are normal. Well, it's not a question of health, actually. actually. Mm. His health is fine. He's perfect health. He just has knobbly knees. Yeah. It's not a joke, you know, it's just that his knees knock together. Mm. And uh, the operation that we're going for will actually, they'll, it's a horrendous situation. You know, we're just, just going to cut the bone and stretch, straighten yeah. his legs out. And in a sense, you know, when you think about handicaps, he's lucky because he wears his honest sleeve. You know, Johnny walks in the room and he walks in a bit like that. The rest of us have enormous handicaps because none of us don't have a handicap. So, but ours are inside. You know, you have to get to know us. Right. So in a sense, you know, there is an advantage to it, mm. as I see it. Mm. He uses it every time I try and beat That's him right. up. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hit me! Listen, they, I believe the Variety Club have been nobbling you and, and me too about doing a charity, so I think I'll do no, you're donating doing a charity. gift. Oh, well, donating? Right. What have you donated? Uh, a book, I think. Not one of yours. One of mine, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only way I can shift him off the bookstalls. Yeah. But I think what we should do is insist that the money goes to that charity. Oh, that, that would be, be fabulous. Mm. So what are you going to give oh, me? Oh, I'll give him a sock. All right, we'll have a sock. What am I bid for one of Mr. Starr's oh, socks? Oh, there we go. Straight off your foot. <laughs> I did shower today. There you are. There you... Mmm, roses. <laughs> <laughs> that will be auctioned for Variety Club for charity. I'd give you the shoes, but I've only got one pair. <laughs> <laughs> Could I have the other sock as well? No, you, think? you oh, only go get on. one. Oh, no. come on, don't be mean. No, don't be... No, don't make, lay it on me, Michael. Make, How make, many books did you give? One. One. All right, I'll give two <laughs> books. You give two books, I'll give you two socks. All right, All right. give me two socks, oh, I'll give two dear, books. Oh, dear, oh, dear. There you are. What I'm a way glad to you collect, didn't give eh? three. We'd be down to the underpants. <laughs> God bless you.